It is stated in the ancient Vedic literatures of India that God, the source of all that exists, visible and invisible, is an overwhelmingly beautiful, ever youthful personality whose foremost name is Krishna, which means the all-attractive one. Once every 8,600 million years, Lord Sri Krishna descends to this earthly planet. His last visit here was a mere 5,000 years ago, and it is recorded that Krishna said, of all that is material and all that is spiritual in this world, know for certain that I am both its origin and dissolution. There is no truth superior to me. Everything rests on me as pearls are strung on a thread. As the Supreme Personality of Godhead, I know everything that has happened in the past, all that is happening in the present, and all things that are yet to come. I also know all living entities, but me, no one knows. The whole cosmic order is under me. By my will it is manifested again and again, and by my will it is annihilated at the end. I am the goal, the sustainer, the master, the witness, the abode, the refuge and the most dear friend. I am the creation and the annihilation, the basis of everything, the resting place and the eternal seed. I am the self seated in the hearts of all creatures. I am the beginning, the middle and the end of all beings. I am the generating seed of all existences. There is no being moving or unmoving that can exist without me. Know that all these beautiful, glorious and mighty creations spring from but a spark of my splendor. Of all creations, I am the beginning and the end and also the middle. Of all sciences, I am the spiritual science of the self and among logicians, I am the conclusive truth. He who knows me as the unborn, as the beginningless, as the supreme lord of all worlds, he, undeluded among men, is freed from all sins. I am the source of all the spiritual and material worlds. Everything emanates from me. The wise who know this perfectly engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts always chanting my glories, endeavoring with great determination, bowing down before me, these great souls perpetually worship me with devotion. Earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence and false ego, altogether these eight comprise my separate material energies. I am the taste of water, the light of the sun and the moon, the syllable Om in the Vedic mantras. I am the sound in ether and ability in man. From the highest planet in the material world down to the lowest, all are places of misery wherein repeated birth and death take place. But one who attains to my abode never takes birth again, but enjoys eternal life unending bliss and full knowledge of all that exists. Krishna has skillfully combined the elements of earth, fire, air, water, ether, mind, intelligence, intellect and ego to form everything that we can see, hear, taste, smell 
and feel. Krishna has made this world so attractive that most people have completely forgotten about his world where eternal life, unending happiness and total knowledge is experienced.
The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna, is inviting everyone to come back to his kingdom, where life, knowledge and happiness is unlimited. However, interested persons must be willing to worship God with all their hearts and become his devotee. Almost four hours before sunrise, at 3.30 a.m., the devotees of Lord Sri Krishna start their day. A full night's rest for a devotee is six hours. This means that the devotees have 18 hours out of every 24 to serve their spiritual master and the Supreme Lord. The spiritual master of the Hare Krishna movement, His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, says that a person who is Krishna conscious cannot bear to pass even a minute of his life without being engaged in the service of the Lord. A Krishna conscious person is always alert in the discharge of his duties in Krishna consciousness and therefore any unnecessary time spent sleeping is considered a great loss. Cleanliness of the body is an essential part in the process of becoming Krishna conscious. So the spiritual master Prabhupada insists that all his disciples shower at least twice a day. A cold shower is also recommended as this helps quell the desire for sex life. One must develop self-control or else advancement in spiritual life and subsequent God-realization is impossible, it is said. The dhoti is the name given to the garment which is worn by the male members of the Hare Krishna movement. It is simply a piece of cloth four and a half yards long by one yard or more wide which is wrapped around the body, folded and tucked in. It has been the traditional dress of the Krishna devotees since the time of Krishna's visit to earth 5,000 years ago. Some say that this apparel has been worn by the devotees of the Lord since time immemorial. The devotees say that the dhoti is extremely comfortable to wear and allows great freedom of movement. Oh, no. 
Apart from their style of dress, the devotees of Lord Sri Krishna can be immediately recognized by the clay markings on their foreheads. Tilak, as these markings are called, are applied to twelve different parts of the body, and while applying it, the devotee recites one of the principal names of God, at the same time requesting in his mind that that particular part of his body be protected from injury of any kind. Aritik means to greet the Lord. During the day, the Krishna devotees greet the Lord seven times. And of these seven times, the early morning greeting at 4.30 a.m. is considered the most auspicious or all good. First of all, eight prayers are sung praising the spiritual master, for he is an ocean of auspicious qualities. From him, ecstatic love for God emanates. The spiritual master is receiving the blessings of Krishna, the ocean of mercy, because he is always relishing the mellows of pure devotion within. The spiritual master is always engaged in the temple worship of Krishna, the supreme personality of Godhead, and his female consort, Radharani. He also engages his disciples in such worship. I offer my humble obeisances unto the lotus feet of such a spiritual master, they sing. All songs of praise that the devotees sing are sung in the ancient Sanskrit language because it is the original language and is spoken by the inhabitants of the heavenly planets as well as the ever-liberated beings who live eternally in the kingdom of Krishna, known as the spiritual sky. Krishna, which means the all-attractive one, is considered by all authorities as the most important name of God. Rama means the cause of all causes, and Hare means the destroyer of evil. As Krishna is the all-attractive person, the devotees worship his deity form, which is a representation of him carved from either wood or stone. To the advanced devotees who have become purified, there is no difference between this deity form and the Lord himself. The devotees say that worshipping these stone and wood forms of the Lord is like getting into practice for when they are called back home to serve Krishna in his world. This is not idol worship, his divine grace Prabhupada has often said. It is idol worship to the rascals only. Because Krishna is present in a personal form in each and every atom, he can therefore accept our love and devotion through the deity form. It is recorded in the ancient Vedic literatures that Krishna said that a person who is in a jubilant spirit, who feels profound devotional ecstasy while dancing before me, and who manifests different features of bodily expression, 
can burn away all the accumulated sinful reactions he has stocked up for many, many thousands of years. Just as by clapping the hands one can cause birds to fly away, similarly the birds of all sinful activities which are sitting on the body can be made to fly away simply by dancing and clapping before the deity of Krishna. Vedic knowledge, or the transcendental knowledge of God, his names, fame, pastimes, activities, etc., was first spoken by the Lord himself, and since that far distant time has been passed down word for word exactly through a chain of spiritual masters. This is called disciplic succession, and during each ceremony the devotees pay their humble respects to this long line of masters and disciples. It is written in the Vedic scripture, known as the Bhagavad Gita, that Krishna said, He who meditates on me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, his mind constantly engaged in remembering me, undeviated from the path, he is sure to reach me. In another chapter of the same scripture, it is recorded that Krishna said, For one who remembers me without deviation, I am easy to obtain. And whoever, at the time of death, quits his body remembering me, at once attains my nature. The process for developing constant memory of Krishna is to hear the sound vibration created by the reciting or chanting of his holy names. 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Collectively, these sixteen names are referred to as the Maha Mantra, or the greatest sound vibration which can take one to a level above the mind. Apart from the ability to help one remember Krishna, the devotees claim that the chanting of this mantra gradually cleanses the mind of all impure thoughts that can hamper one's progress towards God-realization. They say also that whatever religion a man may be inclined towards, if he chants this mantra, or for that matter any authorized name of God, he will benefit from it. The spiritual master Prabhupada recommends that his disciples, while chanting this mantra, try as much as possible to remember its translated meaning, which is, O oh my Lord, or the energy of the Lord, please engage me in your devotional service. During this time of the morning, the devotees walk around the temple at least three times, and it is written that a person who does this can counteract the circulating process of repeated birth and death in this material world. We are not interested in performing violence. Actually, this Krishna consciousness movement is a non-violent movement. Although there are nine processes for performing devotional service to the Lord, of which the easiest is Shravanam, or hearing the Bhagavad Gita scripture from the realized person. This will turn one to thought of the Supreme Being, it is said, and this in turn will lead to Niskala, or remembrance of the Supreme, and thus will enable one at the time of death to attain a spiritual body which is just fit for association with the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna. Here, His Holiness Swami Maravisa Maharaj gives one of the daily lectures to the other devotees. Battlefield called the battlefield of Kurukshetra. So how can we understand this violence of the Bhagavad Gita and this violence uh, that we're speaking about here in the Srimad Bhagavatam in relationship to our present day and age? Well, actually, uh, the present day and age is actually a violent situation going on. But the devotees of Lord Krishna, we are not meeting violence uh, with violence in that way. We are meeting the violence of this material world uh, by the, the chanting of the holy names of God. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually said you know, that we should chant the holy names of God. Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Kevalam. Kalo Nasteva 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 Nasteva. That by chanting the holy names of God, we can counteract uh, all the violence that's going on. We can actually create a peaceful situation in the world simply by chanting God's holy name. People may say, oh, that's a lot of bunk. How can you say that? We have all these violent people. Well, we have, we have history. We have case histories right here before us. We have people here right in this room who are very prone to violence, very, very prone to degradation, violence upon others' bodies, violence upon their own bodies. But, by simply by chanting the name of God, chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 they have been able to become non-violent. Not artificially non-violent. Not hiding behind non-violence to avoid a fight. Many of the devotees here are great fighters. But they do not want to fight. What is there to prove by fighting? But they do want to fight, but their weapon is the holy name of God. They defeat the demoniac principles, the demoniac forces in the world, by chanting the holy names of the Lord. 
So in this way, our spiritual master, in the beginning of Krishna consciousness movement, he has instructed all the devotees to chant the holy names of the Lord. It is benefit for other people, and it is benefit for you also. Like I said, violence is not just committed upon others' bodies, it may be committed upon your own body. So therefore, along with the chanting of Hare Krishna, the spiritual master says, please avoid the four basic uh, sinful activities. That is, illicit sex, gambling, intoxication, and meat eating. These things are causing violence upon your own body. This is not the nature of your spirit soul. Your spirit soul doesn't want to eat meat. This is what you are in essence. And the spirit soul is there in your heart. The spirit soul doesn't want to eat meat. The spirit soul doesn't want to take intoxication. It doesn't want to have illicit sex. It doesn't want to gamble. It's not interested in these things. These things are the characteristics of the material world. The spirit soul, uh, he is interested in serving God. Chanting the names of God. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Shmaranam, Padasevanam, Dasyam. Like that. He is engaged, he is uh, desiring uh, to serve the Supreme Personality of God. But this material body is like a cloak of illusion. It's cloaking the, the, the spirit soul. And the spirit soul, under this cloak of illusion, of this material body and the subtle mind, intelligence, and false ego also, which is part of this material energy. It's misidentifying itself. And instead of doing what he wants to do, he is exercising his energy and engaging all these material activities. So the idea of chanting the holy names of the Lord is kind of like peeling back these layers of illusion, becoming a, uh, free from illusion. And when one becomes free from illusion, he engages himself in pure spiritual activity. And this is happiness in life. We are putting forth this contention that the spirit soul is by nature satchitananda, full of knowledge, full of bliss, and eternal. But this material atmosphere is not of that nature. You can all look around, you can see. This material world is not eternal because everybody's dying. This material world is not full of knowledge because everybody's asking everyone else questions. Everybody's putting forth their theories and their doctrines. And this material world is not full of bliss. Nobody can say that they are always happy. But we are saying, and we have proof from the scriptures, from the sadhus, or the holy men who have experienced the kingdom of God, and through our own practical experience, that the spirit soul, by nature, is full of knowledge, full of happiness, and eternal. So therefore, this Krishna consciousness way of life is the means of reinstating the spirit soul in that natural constitutional position, or that natural atmosphere. The analogy that is given is about a fish. If we take a fish out of water and we put it on dry land, we can give that fish so many nice amenities. We can give it some nice oil for its body, we can fan it, we can give it some nice fish food, you know, we can uh, put some olive oil on it, we can even put them in a nice bed with silken pillowcases and, and sheets. You know. We can take them for a, a walk. Or we can put them on a little, uh, little carriage and we can walk them around the neighborhood. And that fish will be in constant anxiety. We give him fish food. We give him oil. If we fan his body. Even if we take another fish and put it in beside him in the bed and they can flip and flop around together. <laughs> The fish will not be satisfied. He will not be satisfied. Why? Because he's out of his natural environment. We can give all these things to the fish, but as long as the fish is out of his natural environment, he will not be satisfied. But if you simply take the fish and you put him back into the water, oh, then he's in ecstasy. And he becomes comfortable. No more anxiety. He's back into his natural environment, his natural atmosphere. This is the way uh, of Krishna consciousness. This is the way of spiritual life. Taking the spirit soul, which is out of its natural environment now, it's in this material world, with all the shortcomings, all the anxiety. Taking the spirit soul and putting it back into the spiritual atmosphere. 
How do you do that? Not by taking the spirit soul out of the body, but utilizing this body in spiritual activities. And what are those spiritual activities? The beginning is chanting. Chanting the, the holy name of God, Hare Krishna. And what is another activity? Eating. The eating Krishna prasadam, food offered to Krishna. What is another activity? Dancing. We're all going to the discos. We're all going to the, the, uh, the concerts. You know, to let ourselves go. You know, to work out. We can dance in front of the deity of the Lord. Dancing, chanting, singing, painting, reading. Whatever we're doing, we can do in relationship to God. In relationship to Krishna. And this is the activity of taking the spirit soul out of the material atmosphere and putting it into the spiritual atmosphere. Just like the fish, taking it out of the dry, off the dry land, out of its bed with silken pillowcases and covers, you know, out of the dry atmosphere into its natural environment of the water. We take the spirit soul out of this material atmosphere, not by removing it from the material world, but by utilizing everything in spiritual consciousness. This is what we are calling uh, Krishna consciousness performed uh, from the material platforms. So, this is the essence of Krishna consciousness philosophy. Not to try to uh, renounce this material world artificially, but to try to utilize this material world, uh, utilize this material atmosphere uh, for creating a spiritual uh, consciousness. So, are there any questions at this time? Every Krishna temple has two altars, one for Krishna and his conjugal lover Radharani, and one for Srila Prabhupada, the spiritual master and founder of the Krishna movement in the Western world. Prabhupada's altar is actually a large throne-like chair called a Vyasasan. At the base of the Vyasasan, there is a slab of marble on which are kept a pair of shoes that Prabhupada once wore. Each devotee places a flower on the shoes as a sign of further respect and adoration for their beloved Prabhupada. This is a Tulsi Arotic, or ceremony to greet Tulsi. Tulsi is a plant on the outside, but actually a pure spirit soul on the inside. She is renowned as a healing herb for physical ailments of the body, and it is stated in the revealed scriptures that it is Krishna's favorite plant. Sankatana means the congregational chanting and singing of the holy names, fame and pastimes of God. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who was born in India 500 years ago, is the father of this Sankatana movement. The devotees claim that Lord Chaitanya was actually Krishna himself disguised as a devotee. He came to revive the original pure God consciousness of all living entities, and his birth was predicted in the Vedic literature compiled over 4,000 years ago. The order of his spiritual master, his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, is fulfilling a sacred mission which is to spread the science of Krishna consciousness to the English-speaking world. The devotees and disciples of Prabhupada say that when one is a surrendered soul, it is his duty to make the desire of the spiritual master his own. Therefore, 
Each day, the devotees distribute Krishna conscious literature to as many people as possible. Literally, hundreds of thousands of books are distributed each year. Prabhupada says, these books present the perfect peace formula beyond sectarian and national limitations. Simply by engaging in the process of self-realization described in such transcendental literature, one can solve all the problems of life. The devotees say that money spent on these books is money well spent, because what people can receive by reading them is priceless. With the sale of such books, the devotees are also helping to relieve the starvation problem in India. Every day they feed up to 5,000 people, satisfying their hunger for food, both material and spiritual. This movement will attract the minds of all people, said Lord Chaitanya. And here, at a political rally held in Sydney's Domain Gardens, the Krishna devotees sing about the glories of Krishna to try to induce others to do the same. With a handful of long packs next week. God is absolute, says Prabhupada. Therefore, even if someone repeats his name from a critical standpoint, they will benefit. Such is the power of the holy name of God. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Some of the uh, sweet and the most exotic things Indian sweet. The spiritual master is always offering Krishna four kinds of delicious food, analyzed as that which is licked, chewed, drunk, and sucked. And when the spiritual master sees that the devotees are satisfied by eating Bhagavat Prashadam, he is satisfied. Every Sunday, the Krishna devotees play the perfect hosts by serving up a feast fit for a king. Everyone is invited to come and try the higher taste as it is referred to by the devotees. Food that has been offered to Krishna before eating becomes prashadam, or Krishna's mercy. Prashadam is made totally from vegetables, fruits, and milk products. No meats, fish, eggs, or other flesh foods are used, as Krishna will not accept them if offered.
Really great fishing. Beautiful. Nice. We got good And the first time we came with um, Eddie. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So maybe it's stewed, stewed fruit. I think. It's actually the spiritual food, you know. It's really good. It's been, it's been offered to Krishna. <laughs> During the feasting. The devotees take the opportunity to converse with the guests about the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. It's a terrible thing to eat meat. It's a great sin. You're not meant to eat meat in this life. You didn't. When it came down that you had to eat meat, there are certain sacrifices you can perform, but not slaughterhouses. Not to open butcher houses, to murder millions of cows. What does the cow do? The cow gives you nice milk. The bull tills the field so that you can have nice grains and vegetables, fruits. And from milk, you make so many wonderful products. And we educate them not not to cheat each other, not to become you know, the best in the class and beat all the other guys, but simply to become perfect people you know, and how to develop the lives of Krishna. All the education is geared to that. So they're taught very nicely, very carefully, with love and devotion, and the children are really happy. You know? Some last piece of advice before he went off to the porch. And what he said is, he said, My dear son, he said, Please try to advance in spiritual life while you've got this human body. Don't become mad after those same pleasures which are available to the dogs and the hogs, right? The dogs and the hogs, they, they can have sense pleasures, right? They can eat, they can sleep, they can mate. They just don't do it in a very sophisticated way. Right? So what do Sean Dave is saying? He says you've got higher intelligence, you've got a human form of life. So don't misuse your intelligence. Krishna is situated in our hearts, but we are not pure enough to, to listen to this. Voice from within, and uh, therefore we have um, Krishna has sent us uh, a guru where we can hear um, from without, you know, and, and uh, inquire from the spiritual master, you know, uh, what is to be done because we are too impure, we are too conditioned, you know, to, to uh, uh, know what to do and how to advance in spiritual life. So if we hear. Associate with this atmosphere, this spiritual atmosphere, in this particular body, now, in this life, automatically something comes about, Krishna consciousness. Often at the Sunday feasts, a play is performed by the devotees which depicts some story relating to Krishna and his eternal pastimes. This play tells the story of how the Kazi, a Muslim magistrate, attempted to stop Lord Chaitanya's holy name chanting movement.
Madanga drowned. Who has committed this great offense? They are preparing a dark future for myself. Who has broken the Madanga? My dear Lord Chaitanya. Come forward! My dear Lord Chaitanya, the, the Kazi has told us that we must not chant the holy names of Krishna anymore. And he has even broken the sacred Madanga drum. Oh, this demon. What right does he have to do this? Why does he base his, his actions in this way? Oh, this demon. We must put him in his place. No one can treat the sacred Madanga drum like this. Join the men together. I want 100,000 Madanga drum players. I want tens of thousands of Kartal players. And tonight, we march on the house of Kartal. And we will see where his power is. We will see if he can stem the tide of the whole world. Now let us join together and march out to the house of the Kazi. And yes, you, all you people, join in with us. And we will go to the house of the Kazi together. And As the story goes, thousands of devotees assembled outside the house of the Kazi. Tempers were hot and violence seemed likely. But Lord Chaitanya asked them to be peaceful. Following this sign of peace, the Kazi and the Lord engaged in a very nice discussion concerning the nature of God. The Kazi was convinced by Lord Chaitanya to join his sacred movement and he declared that no one should ever again put hindrance in the way of the Hare Krishna movement. Such is the power of the holy names of God. Hare Krishna. <laughs> 